Ben here, and I teach you how to write Unity shaders from scratch. In today's lesson, what we're going to do is we are going to modify the URP shader that we had before. Uh, we're going to add things like normals like for now, the for now effect, because we're also going to make sure that the metallic and smoothness still work. Uh, and, and it's also done in a way where it kind of looks like it's more natural. So yeah, let's jump right into it. All right, so the setup we have here, it's very similar to last time we have uh, Unity's shader here on the left, and on the right we have our shader. Uh, this is what we did in the past video. All we did is get URP working uh, just in terms of lighting and a base color. Today what we're going to do is we are going to add normal maps uh, and in terms of a texture. We're going to add uh, the texture itself as well as add for now. Um, the reason why I wanted to do it this way is because we just want to kind of get back to uh, a state in which we can modify our own version of URP shader. So this is what we had last time. Let's go ahead and modify it. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to rename this to main texture. I'm also going to copy it and create a normal map. I'm going to add it to our sample 2D. Cool. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to modify our normal map. As you can see, I actually added it, added it here before. Uh, and I'm also going to add this brick texture right now, this wall texture. Right. As you can see right now, it actually doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead and put a main texture here. As you can see here, I have cull already defined uh, sampling main texture. So I'm going to rename this to main text. We're then going to do main text times base color in albedo. All right, so our albedo, uh, our base color is this gray color. Let's change it to white. So now we're starting to get something very similar to this. Next, let's add a normal maps. To do normal maps, it's very similar to what we've done before. Uh, I'm just going to quickly paste them in and I'll explain each one. So normal maps in URP is nothing special. It's the same as how you would always do it. So let's go ahead and grab the tangent from the app data. Uh, here, we also need uh, two things. We need, to, in addition to normal WS, we need to also do tangent and by tangent. So let's go ahead and add those. Go ahead and save that off. That should be all right. So we've added tangent by tangent here. Uh, into text code five and six because this one is coming from four. So let's go ahead and do the tangent and by tangent in the vertex. I'm going to paste this from a previous example. Um, transform object to world direction. This is how you get uh, tangent into world space, right? Into world space direction. Tangent at W. It's a it's a, a variable that kind of helps you direct the tangent if it's pointing up or down. Um, so that is what Unity will put in their app data tangent uh, in the W uh, component. By tangent, same as always, doing a cross product between the normal world space and the tangent. In our shader, what we need to do is we need to calculate the world space normal. So let's go ahead and paste this here. And this is the same as how we always did normal maps. Uh, you can see all my past videos. This is the, this is the way I normally do it. Um, this is really just taking your normals and multiplying it against a, uh, a half three, which is this tangent by tangent and normal. Um, one other thing that I did change is I now do this unpack normal scale. Uh, before, I think in previous examples, I just did unpack normal. Unpack normal scale gives us this 0 0.5 here, uh, which allows us to modify the normals uh, and scale them up or down. So let's go ahead and take final normals and put it into our input data, normal WS, which is normal world space. And this one is now input data, normal WS, which is fine, let's save that off. And we should see our normals changing already. One thing I wanna add is I wanna add a, a variable for normal map here, because in this one it has the variable added here. Let's go ahead and make that variable. Put under normal map, I'll call it normal intensity, I guess. You can see I create normal intensity here. Uh, I'm going to add it here in our float variable. And then normal intensity will replace this 0.5 here. We should now be able to scale this up and down. It doesn't actually have to be between 0 and 1. So yeah, as you can see now we can go in either direction uh, quite a bit. Let's uh, verify that we are identical. Yeah, it's pretty close. Looks like there's a very slight difference, and I do know, I think I know what that is. 
let's get rid of the metallic and I think we can kind of spot it a little easier. Yeah, there is a slight difference. As you can see, it's flickering slightly. It's really hard to tell. So I'm gonna get rid of the texture. It's this. And what this is, is because uh, Unity Shaders has an extra pass on it. And what it's doing is something called depth normals. We, it's part of their SSAO. We could get rid of it uh, so that it looks identical to ours. Ah, here, it's under assets, settings, here. It's under, I believe I'm under high fidelity render. It's here, it's this little check mark SSAO. If we turn it off and it reloads, yes, it should be now identical to our current one. Let's change the color so it's a little easier to tell. Yeah, I think now it looks identical, right? Whereas before, if we had that SSAO turned on, now you see that extra darkness. It actually looks a little bit better. So uh, perhaps I will add that depth map pass to ours uh, in the future. It's a little bit challenging to add now because we need to actually move all of this code into, um, into a different file where we can do multiple passes or else we'd have to copy and paste this a lot of times, which is a bit uh, complex. So since we're doing single pass, uh, we won't worry about that for now. Uh, I'll actually leave it off for now. All right, I've gone ahead and went back to that metallic like color we had before. Uh, let's go ahead and add Fresnel to this. Oh, and before I do that, actually, uh, so one thing I noticed with our shaders is that this one, the all URP shaders have part of the SRP batching. And one thing I want to do address now before I forget is uh, make sure that we are batching everything with SRP. So. How do, we, how do I know it's not batching in the first place, right? So let's kind of look at our shader. This is the URP base shader. So it's this one right here. As you can see, uh, SRP batch, it says not compatible. And the reason why is because it's, it doesn't have any C buffers wrapping around smoothness. Uh, it's not just smoothness, it's actually all of these variables. Uh, so a good example to look at is under lit input, which is this uh, shader right here. Uh, you can see here, they have this C buffer start and C buffer end, and what they're doing is they're wrapping all of their half and floats inside it. So that's what we want to do as well. So C buffer start, we wrap all of our um, these variables inside here, and I believe that should be enough to cause this thing to be compatible with uh, SRP. So we just want to make sure we wrap these. So let's go ahead and add Fresnel to this. Previous example, we're going to use the exact same math that. Uh, we did where we had Fresnel intensity, ramp, and color. So I'm going to bring those three variables in. All right, so I've copied them here for now color, intensity, and ramp. Uh, let's go ahead and add these here. Next, we're going to add our Fresnel math here. So this is the same as what we did in previous videos uh, as the Fresnel mount. We do a dot product against the view direction. That means uh, as we are approaching the grazing angles of the view direction, it's going to grow higher amount in Fresnel amount. So we can multiply it against the color to raise its intensity uh, and off and powered by a ramp. So now that we have our Fresnel color multiplied by Fresnel color that we've uh, assigned. So that's where our Fresnel color right now is just white. Let's go ahead and display this. So how we always did it before is we always finished all our lighting calculations, and then we just kind of threw the Fresnel on there at the very end. And we could still do that by just tossing it in the emission, right? The emission math always happens at the very end. Emission is uh, a little bit of an unnatural glow, which is what Fresnel is as well. Uh, so if you're making a game in which you want to highlight a character, uh, this is how I would do it. Uh, you can put the Fresnel here, but as you can see, as you change different, uh, and it will still work with your metallic and smoothness. Right, so your Fresnel can still be applied here and it will be based off of the normal map. Right, and the color should be changing here as well. You know, a couple things we want to think about uh, is that, you know, not always do we always just want it as part of the mission. What if we put it as part of the albedo? What would it look like? Um, so if we put it as part of the albedo, it'll be part of the lighting, the base color. So let's go ahead and add that. It will probably only show up Barely, you can probably barely see it. It's a lot easier to see if it was not metallic. So 
So if it's not metallic, now the red will be almost as if it was shading part of the brick. So again, it still looks unnatural, but the lighting now looks more like it's part of it as opposed to uh, if I had it in, say, the emission, it would look even more unnatural because now lighting doesn't affect it, right? Oh, actually, it looks practically the same, so. But if you want it to be extremely red, like you just, you don't care, you want it to be red on its own, what you would have to do is you have to modify this um, here, like so. You would have to modify the output. So let's just say we did float four, uh, color is equal to this, right? Here we were turning color. No, before we return color, color RGB is equal to lerp between color RGB and this one, and you will do it by the Fresnel amount. And then now you're just going straight to that red, right? So that's, that, then this way it looks completely unnatural, but it's also a way to highlight, let's just say you want, you want it, it has to be green, right? Uh, whereas as opposed to not doing a lerp, it will be more, a little bit more of a natural look. Yeah. So I do personally think that one is a little bit better, a little bit more natural. Uh, now when you go to, when you turn on metallic now, at least the, with the green, it kind of looks like it's glowing, but it also seems like the green is part of the, the environment. So if we were to do the same thing, we chose green and we got rid of the smoothness completely, uh, but left it metallic, you can kind of see that uh, in the dark areas, it's darkened, but on the lit side, it's yeah, so personally, I would, if I were to add Fresnel, I would add it here because it looks a little bit more natural as opposed to the way I did it earlier where it was just kind of forcefully changing the color. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share this one with you so you guys can go ahead and start adding these effects to the URP shader. So yeah, that's it for me. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something with this lesson. Uh, if you like my stuff, please like, subscribe, and support my channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye now.